Hello students, I am your social teacher. In the last class, we discuss about a lesson, India location, relief and drainage. So, from geography, we are discussing in this lesson. We already discussed about the physical features, that means the physical formations like continents, oceans, like this. They are called physiographic divisions. So there are six physiographic divisions. Today we are going to discuss about the one of the physiographic division, the Great Northern Plains. Already we discussed about the Northern Mountains. In this class we are going to discuss about Great Northern Plains. So Great Northern Plains is one of the fertile land extending across several states. Several state means seven in North Indian states. That seven North Indian states across the North Great Plains. So this plains, this is extensive plain lies to the south, the northern mountain. This plain is one of the most extensive stretches of the alluvium. Alluvium, the world and it deposited by the river Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra and their tributaries. It is one of the largest that is called the Northern Great Plains. These Great Plains are deposited by the three rivers Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra and their tributaries. These rivers formed this Northern Great Plains. The length of the plain is about 2400 kilometer and the width varies from 240 to 320 kilometer. Its length of the plane 2400 kilometer. We will discuss about this length where it is begin where it is end. Its width increases from east to west. East to west it covers an area of over 7 lakh square kilometer. So this plane extended from 7 lakh square kilometer that is why it is called one of world largest plane. The Great Plains of India is a remarkably homogeneous surface that means it is the same from the beginning. They are formed mostly by the deposition pro uh, process of Himalayan and Vindian rivers. Himalayan mountain and Vindian range rivers deposited this same feature that means homogeneous surface. These rivers deposited enormous quantity of sediment deposited along the foothills and food plains. The important characteristic features of the of sediments deposition in the plains are as follows. The Babur plains, the Tarai tract, the Bangar plains, the Gadar plains and Delta plains. So these North Indian plains are categorized into five. So first we are going to discuss about the, the Babur plain. This plain made up of gravel and unassorted sediment. This is a gravel. What is a gravel? We, we know that the gravel look, looks like a very small stones. That is the gravel. As the sand looks like a small stones. That is called a gravel. By it, this gravels deposited by the Himalayan rivers. The porosity of this plain is so high. The porosity means the small holes. We can see the holes in the soil. That is called porosity. The porosity of the plain is so high that most of the small streams flow over this region disappear. So it absorbs the, so the this type of soil absorbs the moisture or absorbs the water. Then that is the reason this uh, small streams are disappear. It lies to the south of Shivali from west to east. South of Shivali, already we know about the Himalayan ranges, Central Himalayas, Lower Himalayas and Eastern Himalayas. So here the Shivali, Shivali from, this extended from Shivali to West to East and Jammu division to Assam, that means Jammu division to Assam. Its width varies from 8 to 15 kilometer. It is wider in the western plains than in the east. So these western plains wider in the eastern direction. This plain is not suitable for cultivation. Only big trees with large roots thrive in this region. This barber plain is not suitable for the cultivation. 
it's only favor for the large root trees next one is the tarai tract the tarai tract is the zone of extensive dampness so here the extensive dampness thick forest and rich wildlife this tract lies to the south of babar plain so already we know the babar plain in the shivalik to is west to east that means the jammu division to assam so here the this tarai plain or tarai tract lies in the south of babar plains so the width of this belt is 15 to 30 kilometers the tarai is wider in the eastern parts of the greater plains so especially in brahmaputra valley due to the heavy rainfall in many states the tarai so have been cleared for cultivation so here this tarai tract is suitable for the cultivation so brahmaputra river valley receives very heavy rainfall due to this this region has fertile and wet condition this region favor for the cultivation so that is the reason this tarai forest have been cleared for cultivation here another one is the bangar plains this bangar represent the upland alluvial tract of the great plains of india in the great plains there are upland and lowland plains are there if I, this is one of the upland tract this upland tract situated in the alluvial deposition and the great plains of india formed by the older alluvium so bangar is a older alluvium it was deposited in the early time the bangar land lies above the flood limits of the river so in this bangar plains that does not affected by the flood of the rivers this soil is dark in color rich in humus content rich in humus content what is mean by humus humus means the parts that is fat that is a kind of uh, fertile soil a nutrient is part of plants and animals mixed in the soil that is the soil is called humus well drained and useful for agriculture so it's very well drained and useful for agriculture and fourth one is the gadar plains the new alluvium the gadar means new alluvium alluvium means alluvial soil alluvial deposition so this alluvium tracts along the courses of the river are known as the gadar or wetlands the gadar tracts are enriched by fresh deposits of silt every year during rainy season so this plains gadar plains are enriched by the fresh deposition of silt every year during the rainy season the gadar land consists of sand silt clay and mud it is highly fertile soil this gadar plains are highly fertile soil this soil has rich micro and macro nutrients so another one is the delta plain the delta plain is an extension of the gadar land it covers about 1.9 lakh square kilometer in the lower reaches of ganga valley we know the ganga valley so we can see in the map in the ganga valley 1.9 square kilometer is in the delta plains it is an area of deposition as the river flows in this tract the deltic plain consists mainly of old mud new mud and marsh in the delta region the uplands are called chars while the marshes are called bills next one we will see the peninsular plateau it is a most important one the peninsular plateau this region lies to the south of the great northern plains So already we know that northern plains so the, this peninsular plateau lies in the northern below the northern plains it is the largest physiographic division of our country it covers an area of about 16 lakh square kilometer it is an old rocky plateau region 
the topography consists of the series of plateaus and hills ranges interspersed with river valleys here the aravalli is one of the oldest mountain in the world so aravalli hill marks the northwestern boundary of the plateau you can see in the map aravalli hills mark the northwestern boundary of this peninsular plateau its north and northeastern boundaries are marked by bandalkand upland gaimur and rajmal hills so there are the four boundaries of this plateau first one is aravalli range and another one is the bandalkand upland gaimur and rajmal hills the western ghats and eastern ghats mark the western eastern boundaries western ghats and eastern ghats marks the western eastern boundaries the altitude the altitude of a large portion of the plateau is more than 600 meter from mean sea level so altitude means height so most of the plateau is more than 600 meter the peak of anaimudi the peak of anaimudi is the highest point in the plateau so here the peak of anaimudi anaimudi peak is one of the highest point in the peninsular plateau its height is 2695 meter and it's located in anaimalai the general slope of this plateau is towards east the great plateaus is a part of the gondwana landmass already we know about the gondwana landmass it is one of the ancient one due to the old age the rivers in this region attain their base level and developed broad and shallow valleys so another one is uh, river narmada divides the plateau region of india broadly into two parts we can see in the map river narmada it is one of the peninsular river it divides this plateau into two part one is called the central island and the region lying in the south of narmada is called the deccan plateau so central island and the deccan plateau the river narmada divides the plateau into two one is central island another one is narmada deccan plateau all the major rivers of this plateau all the major rivers mean mahanadi godavari krishna kaveri these are the major rivers in this plateaus lies to the south of the vindhyas already you can see in the maps of india and vindhya range aravalli range ajanta hills these are the hills of this plateau you can see narmada and dapti are the two rivers situated to the south of the vindhyas narmada and dapti are the two rivers situated to the south of the vindhyas so flow westward these two rivers flows westward not in the eastern direction it flows westward their movement towards west is due to the presence of a rift valley in this region so this two rivers only flows westward why that is the reason is that the presence of rift valley in this plateau that is why they flowing towards west another one central highland so already we discussed about the narmada river the narmada river divides this plateau into two one is central highland another one is deccan plateau so now we are going to discuss about the central highland the central highlands extended between the river narmada and the northern great plains so already we know that the central highland extended between river narmada and the northern great plains in between this this central highlands is situated the aravalli forms the west and northwestern edge of central highlands aravalli range so this aravalli range situated in this region the deccan plateau this physiographic division is the largest part of the plateau region of india the shape of this plateau is roughly triangular in shape one of the side of this triangular is marked by the lines joining kanyakumari with rajmal hills and this line passes through the eastern ghats so this region this plateau passes through eastern ghats from kanyakumari to rajmal hills the second arm is marked by the satpura range 
Mahadeo Hills, Maikal Range and Rajmal Hills. The third arm is marked by the Western Ghats. The area of this plateau is about 7 lakh square kilometer and the highest range from 500 sorry highest range from 500 to 1000 meter above sea level. This is the Deccan plateau salient features of the Deccan plateau. This Deccan plateau is armed covered by three armed already we discussed about it. The first one is Kanyakumari with Rajmal Hills and second armed is marked by Satpura range, Mado Hills, Maikal range and Rajmal Hills. The third one is Western Ghats. The Western Ghats forms the western edge of peninsular plateau. So Western Ghats is the edge of the peninsular plateau. It runs parallel to the Arabian Sea coast. The northern part of the, this range is called as Shayadris. So northern part of this plateau is called Deccan plateau is called Shayadris. The height of the Shayadri increases from north to south. The height is vary from south to north. Anemudi is a sort of tri junction of the Anemalai range. The Kaudaman hills and the Parani hills. Kodaikanal is a beautiful hill resort situated on the Parani hills. So here the Anemali is a sort of tri junction. So tri junction, three junction of the Anemali range. The eastern ghats runs from southwest to northwest from the eastern edge of this plateau. So we can see in the map the eastern ghats runs from southwest to north east from the eastern edge of this plateau. This range is also called the Poor Vadri. The eastern guards join the western guards at the Nilgiri hills bordering Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. So this western guards and eastern guards join the Nilgiri hills. It is a border of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. The eastern guards are not continuous like the western guards. So western guard is a continuous hill of ranges but eastern guard is not a continuous ranges. The river of Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna, Pennayar and Kaveri have dissected this range at a many places. So this eastern guards is dissected by the Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna, Pennayar and river Kaveri. That is the reason this eastern guards is not continuous hill of ranges. Ok children, today class is over. You need to complete the assignment by clicking the link below. Thank you.